Okay, we've uh, reached the end of Moshe Rabbeinu's time here in this world. It's time to transfer the leadership. Posik in the Zaysa Bracha says, Yeshua ben Nun, Mole Ruach Chochma, Kisomach Moshe is Yod of Alam. <coughs> was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moshe laid his hands upon him and B'nai Yisrael obeyed him and did as Hashem commanded Moshe. There's a very obvious question, I think. Why is this story of Yoshua being repeated? Why is it here? We already know all the details. Pasha's Pinchas, there's a lot more that we learn over there. Pasha's Pinchas, Vayoma Hashem O Moshe, Kachlaches Yoshua Binun, Isha Sheruach Boy, Vesamachtes Yotcho Elov. Hashem says to Moshe, Take for yourself Yoshua Binun, a man of spirit, and you shall lay your hands upon him. And you shall present him before Eloza Koyim and before the entire congregation, and you shall command him in their presence. And you shall bestow some of your hoidcha, some of your glory <coughs> upon him. So the Bnei Yisrael will listen to him. V'lifnei Eloza ha'koyin yamoid v'shal lo'i b'mishpat ha'urim lifnei Hashem al-piv yeitzu v'al-piv yavoyu hu v'chol Bnei Yisrael itoi v'chol ha'eda. And you should stand before Eloza ha'koyin and you should seek counsel from him, from the judgment of the Urim before Hashem. By his word they shall go and by his word they shall come. He and all of Yisrael, together with the entire congregation. And Moshe did, as HaKadosh Baruch Hu commanded him. He took Yoshua, presented him before Eloza Koim, before the entire con congregation. And he laid his hands upon him and he commanded him in accordance with what he told Moshe. It's all there in Pasha's Pinchas. Everything's detailed. So why the repetition? What's the Torah teaching us over here? There are a few perushim. Try to focus just on one. Why is the Torah repeating itself? To teach us now, at this moment, just before we end the Torah and start it anew again, to emphasize that the Torah is available to everyone. Every single person can acquire Torah. Let's see. It was not a done deal from birth that Yoshua was going to be the next manik, the next leader of Klal Yisrael, that he was going to take Moshe Rabbeinu's place. Yoshua earned his position. He earned his position by toiling over Torah and by adhering himself to Moshe Rabbeinu, like superglue. Pasuk says, in Pashas Mishpotim, Vayoyim HaShem HaMoshe Alei Alei Elai HaHora Veyeshom Vetnelecha Ez Lucho Isa Eben Vatoyo Vamitzvah Asher Kasafti Lehoi Roiso HaKolish Bochu says to Moshe, come up to me on the mountain, remain there, and I'll give you the stone tablets the law and the commandments which I've written to instruct them. And then the Torah goes on to say, Moshe 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 
what happened? Moshe and Yehoshua, his servant, arose and Moshe ascended the Haralukim, the, the mountain of Hashem. Says Rashi. Vayoko Moshe Yehoshua Mishalsoi. Lo yodati ma tivoi shal Yehoshua kan. Says Rashi, I don't know why Yehoshua is here. Why is Yehoshua mentioned? Vayoimer ani. So I'm telling you, Shaya at Talmud melave le Rav ad mokim hagbolus tchume ahav. The Yehoshua. The Talmud of Moshe Rabbeinu escorted his Rebbe until the very moment that he couldn't go any further. Because Akadish Baruch told only Moshe to go up the Har. Umisham, says Rashi, the Yao Moshe Levadoi. He went by himself. El Hara Eloikim to the mountain of Hashem. Says Rashi, the Yoshua not Hashem Oloi. Yoshua pitched his tent at the foot of Har Sinai. Then it's Ake Shom Kol Aboim Yoim, and he stayed there for forty days. Shekain Matzinu Kishiyorad Moshe, Moshe, and uh, Rashi cites a proof for what he's saying. When Moshe came down from Har Sinai. Vayishma Yoshua is kola amberoi. Lamadnu shelohaya Yoshua imayim. Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't together with everybody when they built the golden calf. Rather, he was waiting at the foot of Har Sinai in order to be makabel pnei rabbi when his Rebbe Moshe came down, that he shouldn't waste even a second. He shouldn't lose even a second of being together with his Rebbe. Even when Moshe wasn't there, he didn't go back to the camp and wait and then come back again to the foot of the mountain. But rather he pitches his tent and he lives over there for 40 days in order not to lose a moment together with his Rebbe. And that's is why he merited to become the next leader of Klal Yisrael. What a beautiful, inspirational message. Every single person can be zoiche, can merit the kesa Torah, the crown of Torah. What do they have to do? That's what the Torah is teaching us. To attach themselves to G'dol Torah, To attach themselves to those who are greater than they are. Of course, a person needs to sit and to learn. But the very first thing they need to know before they sit and learn is that they can't understand Torah by themselves. In order to understand Torah, they have to have a Rebbe. Rav Yitzhak Hutna, one of the G'doylim from the previous generations, points out a fascinating and, after you hear it, obvious observation. Torah Shebich Sav is the written Torah. Torah Shebich Sav is not understandable without Torah Shebaal Peh, which is the oral Torah. Mishnah is Torah Shabbal Peh. If the function of the Mishnah is to explain Torah Shabbich Sav, the written Torah, the Mishnah should be something which is perfectly clear. Every Mishnah, you should be able to understand it clearly because it's there in order to teach us what's missing in the details of Torah Shabbich Sav. But that's not the way the Mishnah works. 
You open up the very first Mishnah in Shas, and it starts off with a question, and it offers three different alternative answers. And from there, the Mishnah just goes on and on into a whole series of different ideas, different concepts, different answers, contradictory ideas. And then each Mishnah has to be explained by the Gemara, and the Gemara itself is going to be also in exactly the same format. Says Rav Hutner, it doesn't make any sense. Mishnah is supposed to be something which clarifies Torah Shebich Sav, and yet the Mishnah, if anything, it makes it more complicated, it makes it less clear. Explains Rav Hutner the most incredible Yisoy, the most incredible foundational idea. The very first thing that the Mishnah is teaching us is that if you don't have a Rebbe, you can't understand. And how did your Rebbe understand what he knows? That he learned from his Rebbe. And how does his Rebbe know what he knows from his Rebbe? And his Rebbe from his Rebbe? Until you go all the way back to Hasina. That's the foundation of Tosh Shabal Peh. That's the foundation of the Oral Torah, to teach us that there's a chain of transmission. And in order to understand Torah, you need to be a part of that chain. Listen to what the Chofetz Chaim has to say about Ashtik Ufisa Gemara. It's Gemara in Baba Basra, Rafa'in Hei, Omad Aleph. When it becomes clear that Yoshua is going to become the next leader of Klal Yisrael, he's going to take over from Moshe Rabbeinu. The Gemara says, Zekenim Shabu'isa Ador Omru. The Zekenim, the leaders, the elders of the generation, they said, Pnei Moshe, Kipnei Chama. Moshe Rabbeinu was like the sun. Pnei Yoshua. Kepnei Levana. Yoshua, he's like the moon. And then they add, Oi lanu le'eza busha, le'oisa busha, oi lanu le'oisa klima. All the Mepharshim understand the Gemara in the same way. Say the Mepharshim. Moshe Rabbeinu is the sun. Moshe Rabbeinu brings the light of Torah into the world. Moshe Rabbeinu is the one who brings the Torah into the world, who keeps the Torah into the world, who teaches Torah to the world. <laughs> when they realize, as Canaan, the leaders, when they realize that Yoshua is going to take Moshe Rabbeinu's place, Yoshua. He's nothing compared to Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu is a sun. Moshe Rabbeinu brings life. Moshe Rabbeinu brings heat, warmth. Yeshua is just a moon compared to Moshe Rabbeinu. Oi la, lo oisa busha, oi la, lo oisa klima. Explain the Mephoshim that the Zkenim are saying, what a disgrace, what an embarrassment. Once we had a Moshe Rabbeinu, once we had a sun, and now what do we have? <laughs> we have a Yoshua, it's a moon. Excuse the pun, but it's a pretty poor reflection on Klal Yisrael. Along comes a Chofetz Chaim, and he says the most incredible pshat over here. There's never going to be another Moshe Rabbeinu in the world. Moshe Rabbeinu is the son because he brought the Torah into the world. Who is better qualified to take over after Moshe Rabbeinu? Who is better qualified to bring light into the world if not Yoshua? Because if Moshe Rabbeinu is the son, Moshe Rab uh, Yoshua is the moon. And as we all know, the moon doesn't have its own source of light. The moon simply reflects the light of the sun into the world. There is no one better qualified 
that you're sure to take over from Moshe Rabbeinu because he absorbed everything that Israeli had to give and he was able to give that over. Right, so what does it mean? Oy la lo oisa busha, oy la lo oisa chlima. What are those Canaan, what are they embarrassed about? What is the disgrace over here? Explains the Chafetz Chaim the most unbelievable thing. Says the Chafetz Chaim, the Canaan looked at Yoshua and they said, you know, 40 years ago, 40 years ago, we were bigger Tamari Chachamim than he was. We were smarter than he was. We were sharper than he was. We were greater than he was. When did he overtake us? At what point did he become greater than us? The disgrace, the embarrassment is theirs. Goes on the Chofetz Chaim to explain the most incredible thing over here. From where did Yoshua become the leader? From where did Yoshua become the next carrier of the Torah in the world? Say Chazal. That Yoshua used to get up five minutes earlier than everybody else. And he used to go to the base of Medish before everybody else and make sure that everything was ready when everybody came and they could start learning. And Yoshua would stay five minutes after everybody else had left in order to make sure that the base of Medrash looked the way that it's supposed to look. Says the Chafetz Chaim, Yoshua became great because he invested five extra minutes in his Avodah Hashem, in his serving Hashem, more than everybody else. Five minutes a day, that's all it is. Five minutes a day, that changes a person from mediocre and turns them into something incomparable. An extra five minutes of Avodah Hashem. Everyone here is familiar, I'm sure, with the reputation of Rav Moshe Feinstein. Rav Moshe Feinstein was the Hoyse Kador, passed away about 40 years ago. Moshe Feinstein was not a very tall person. And he used to give a shear on Friday in his yeshiva in the Lower East Side. And especially in the winter when time was tight, as soon as the shear was over, everybody left. And Rav Moshe Feinstein was left together with his closest Talmud and Rav Moshe Feinstein used to get up on the tables to switch off the lights. In those days, the fluorescent lights didn't have a light switch on the wall. They had a string dangling down. And Rav Moshe Feinstein couldn't reach the string from while standing on the, on the floor, on the ground. So he would climb up on the table and he would do it. So his Talmud told him, Rebbe, it's Pashnas. You shouldn't be doing this. What did Rav Moshe Feinstein tell him? Yoshua did it. That's how we become great. Just an extra few moments every single day. They add up. They contribute. They become something. Says the Chofetz Chaim, Oy la lo oisa busha, Oy la lo oisa chlima, what is the difference between busha and chlima? So he says busha is not necessarily something that we did. Chlima is that we're embarrassed about something that we did. We acted the wrong way. Chlima is looking at somebody and thinking, I could have reached that place if only I would have focus myself properly. If only I would have applied myself a little bit harder. Says the Chofetz Chaim, they were Mole Busha in front of Moshe. The Busha was that they couldn't reach Moshe Rabbeinu's level. But the Chlima, they were Mole Chlima in front of Yoshua. Because Yoshua's level they could have reached. But they didn't. 
Who is Yahushua? Listen to how Kodesh Baruch Hu describes Yahushua. It's a Pesach in Mishle, Perek of Zion. Noitzer te'eno yoichal piria v'shoyme adoyno v'yechubad. Somebody who guards a fig tree will eat its fruit, and he who guards his master will be honored. Ask him a question. Why fig tree? The Medrash in Bamid Rabba explains because a fig tree, the figs ripen at different times. They don't all appear at the same time in the same the same, within the same week, but rather, one by one, they start ripening. Explain the Mephoshim, so too, Chidusha Torah needs to be nurtured individu individually. A person doesn't just reach all of their novel ideas and Torah understanding in one go. Bit by bit, as they build up their knowledge, perhaps it's possible to suggest as well, That if Yoshua is a lichen to a fig, because a manig, a leader, needs to nurture each individual. Each person individually needs to be given life by the leader. The ultimate reason that it's Yoshua who is appointed to succeed Moshe is because he is Moshe's shamish, the ultimate attendant, a personal assistant, an enlightened Western society, in inverted commas. They disparage the concept of aspiring to be a mishamish, a personal assistant. That's pathetic. You've got to pitch for the top. In Western culture, the only thing that counts is the end result. Not in Yiddishkeit. Not by us. Being the personal assistant to someone who is beloved by Hashem is one of the highest accolades that a person can earn. It's the ultimate degree in Jewish life to serve Talmud Echachonim, to live within their orbit, to merit to be a part of their lives. How does one reach it? There's a Mishnah. A Mishnah in Pirkei Ovis that teaches us the secret of how to reach the highest accolades. Perik Beis, Mishnah Vov, Hillel teaches the loy habayshen loy me. A person who's shy isn't going to learn. Aravadim Ibatanora offers what seems to be a very simple explanation. Says the Rav, only someone prepared to run the risk of sounding foolish will ask questions. Of course, like everything that the Rav Avadya Mabatanora writes, there's a tremendous depth to what he's saying. Without that special quality, without that ability to be prepared to show others that you don't know something, when a person may be able to present a facade to the outside world, a facade of sophistication, a facade of being wise, but that's all it is, just a facade. It's just an external thing. That's all it is. Because such a person won't learn. Such a person can't.
cannot grow. And in our world, if they cannot grow, they cannot be productive. What is it that drives a person to avoid letting people know that they don't know? It's pleasure. But people shouldn't think, Khalila, that they're a klutz, that they're ignorant. Chazal teach that when Yoshua stayed at the bottom of Har Sinai for 40 days, that the mon, the manna that everybody ate in the desert, came to him over there. Not just that, it was the equivalent of the manna that was given to every, the whole of Klal Yisrael. Hipshat. Yoshua's underlying midah, his, his trait of being able to sublimate himself to Moshe Rabbeinu, to show that he doesn't know and to ask, that's why Yoshua waits there for 40 days and 40 nights waits for Moshe Rabbeinu to come back because he doesn't want to miss one moment of being able to ask Moshe Rabbeinu his questions. Imagine how square Yoshua would have looked in our eyes if we would have been there in the Midbar. A klutz doesn't even begin to describe what we would have thought about him. Yoshua's traits, those that are traits are brought into greatness. Rav Chaim Shmuel Levitz, a very famous story, Rav Chaim Shmuel Levitz, the late Rosh Hashiva in the Mir. When he was a bocher, he was once visiting his uncle, Rav Avran Yafin. Rav Avran Yafin was the Rosh Hashiva of Navodok in Bialystok. Navodok had yeshivas all over Eastern Europe. And he once asked his uncle, show me the best bocher in the yeshiva. I want to know who's the best boy here in the yeshiva. So Rav Avon Yafin pointed at one boy and he says, this boy over here, he's the best boy when it comes to learning be'ir, when it comes to learning in depth, he's the best boy. But this boy over here, when it comes to learning be'kiyas, when it comes to learning greater amounts of learning, he's the best in Bikiyas. And this boy over here, he's the best in Halacha. And this boy over here, he's the best boy in and just understanding as far as understanding the logic of the Gemara. And then Rav Avram Yafin looked at his nephew and he says, but this boy here, he's the best boy in the yeshiva. And Chai Shmuel Levitz looks at him, he says to him, I don't understand. If this boy is the best boy in Iyun, and this boy is the best boy in Bikiyas, and this boy is the best boy in Halacha, and this is the best boy in understanding Svaras, what's left? And his uncle looked at him and he said, this bocher over here is the biggest mavakesh in the yeshiva. It's true there were other boys in the yeshiva who at the time, maybe they plumbed greater depths than that particular bocher. Maybe they'd completed more masechtas than that particular bocher. But no one, no one, was prepared to keep searching and questioning like that bocha. No one was prepared to look as ignorant as that Talmud in his search for the truth. Who was that Talmud? 
His name was Yaakov Yisrael Kanievsky. He became known as a disciple of God, one of the greatest scholars in his generation, and the father of Achaim Kanievsky. That's why the Medrash likens Yoshua to a fig. Because figs don't ripen all at once. They ripen one by one. Bit by bit. So to Yoshua. He wasn't born brilliant. He wasn't born already knowing the Torah. Or with a natural understand or with a natural aptitude to understand the Torah. But he worked on himself. Day by day, page by page, chapter by chapter, halacha by halacha. Chazal teach that Eliyahu Novi once met a fisherman. And he asked the fisherman, Tell me, he says, do you learn Torah? And the fisherman says, no. He says, I don't learn Torah. And Eliyahu Novi says to him, what are you going to tell HaKadosh Baruch when you get upstairs at the age of 120, what are you going to tell him? The fisherman says, I have the perfect answer. So he says to him, really, what are you going to tell him? So the fisherman is going to say, I was stupid. I was ignorant. I was dumb. I couldn't absorb the Torah. It was too much for me. Says Eliyahu Novi, that's a great answer. He says, tell me, what do you do? He says, I'm a fisherman. He says, so what you, in order to be a fisherman, a successful fisherman, how, what do you have to do? So he says, I have to make nets. So I have to tie the ropes together, but the holes in the ropes shouldn't be too big because if they are, then the fish will get away. But they shouldn't be too small because then I'll catch the wrong fish. I have to go out on my boat. I have to get to the place where I think that I'm going to be able to find the best catch of fish for the day, drop my nets down to the level that they need to be in order to be able to catch the fish, and then draw them back up, and then take them in and sell them. Says Eliyahu Navi, to the fisherman, the same person who gave you seichel to understand how to be a successful fisherman is the same person who gave you seichel in or, to understand Torah as well. It's not that Torah is different from any other discipline. We just have to learn how to learn it properly, that's all. A Bacha once came to the Chofetz Chaim complaining that he had a weak mind. Well, after a, a month of learning Torah, all he'd managed to accomplish was to learn one page of Gemara. So the Chofetz Chaim asked him, what page are you up to? So he told him, I studied Daf Beis. Every Gemara begins on Daf Beis. So he opened up the first Gemara and he, Daf Beis, that's it. So now he was up to Daf Gimel. So the Chofetz Chaim says to him, corrected him. He says, no, no, no. He says, you're up to Daf Kuf Gimel. You're up to page 103. So the Bokha thought that the Chofetz Chaim didn't hear him properly. So he says, nine, 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 Rebbe, I'm on Daf Gimel, I'm on page three. And the Chofetz Chaim says to him, nine, 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 you're on Daf Kuf Gimel, you're on 103. And then the Chofetz Chaim cited the Medrash from Ovest to Rebbe Nossen, if 
שטוב לוי לאדם דבר אחד בצער ממאה ברווח. says Ovis Rebbe Nossen, it's better to learn once with hardship than a hundred times without hardship. If you studied that daf with difficulty, if you studied that page of Gemara with difficulty, it's the equivalent of studying a hundred dafim with ease. Chofetz Chaim told him, therefore, you can say you're up to daf Kuf Gimel. 103. And yes, it's hard, of course it's hard. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself teaches us how to approach his beautiful and holy Torah. It says the Pesach in Pashas Nitzavim, Ki ha-mitzvah hazois, the mitzvah of learning Torah, asha anuchi metzavach ha-yoyim that I'm commanding you, it's not concealed from you. It's not far away from you. It's not up in the Shamayim. It's not up in the Shamayim. It's not up in the heavens that we're going to say, who's going to climb up into the heavens? And he's going to fetch it for us and tell it over to us so that we can fulfill it. And it's not over the other side of the ocean that we have to say, There's somebody who's going to go across to the other side of the ocean and bring back the Torah for us. It's close to us. It's in our mouths, it's in our hearts. All we have to do is to do it. Says the Medrash. A chsil, a fool, looks at how long the Torah is and says, how can I read all of this? A chacham, a wise person, doesn't look at the length of the Torah. He just starts to read it. One chapter at a time. Why? How? Because says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, It's not far away. And we need to know that if sometimes we feel that it is far away, it's not the Torah that's far away. It's us. Kodesh Baruch is telling us, The problem is ours, not the Torah's. And if we feel that it's far away, it's because we are distancing ourselves from the Torah. It's not that the Torah is distancing itself from us. Posuk, everybody's familiar with Posuk, Pasha Zizai Sabrocha. Torah, Tzivo, Lanu, Moshe, Moirasha, Kihilas, Yaakov. Listen to Rashi. Asha Tziva Lanu, Moshe, Moirasha, Hila, Kihilas, Yaakov. Achaz Nua, Veloi Naz Veno. Says Rashi, the Torah Kedusha that Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave us, we hold on to that Torah and we'll never let go of it. We'll learn it over and over again, and then we learn it over and over again, again. Standing on the threshold of Shmini Atzeres, Simchas Torah, the most focal part of Simchas Torah, 
as we finish the entire Torah. We read the very last Pasha, V'zoi Sabrocha, and then what do we do? We immediately begin the Torah again, straight away, without any pause. We immediately start Pasha's Bereshus. Why? Why can't we just wait? It's only a couple of days until Shabbos. Let's wait until the first Shabbos after Simchas Torah. And then we'll blame Pasha's Bereshus in the regular way. Why is it that on Simchas Torah itself we begin Pasha's Bereshus because we're teaching ourselves the most important lesson of all. The more Torah we fill ourselves up with, the greater is our ability to fill ourselves up with even more Torah. It doesn't work for anything else. For example, the more steak you eat, so the less steak you can eat. The fuller you become, the less space you've got. That boy said, Torah is not steak. Torah is infinite. Torah is timeless. Torah is everything. The more Torah we have, the greater is our ability to absorb even more Torah. Rabbi Feinstein, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein's wife used to say, that her husband was like an alcoholic. But instead of needing wine, he needed Torah. Because the more Torah you've got, the more Torah you need. The more Torah you need, the more Torah you can absorb. So the Pesach, in Pasha's Kisiso, says the Pasuk, of a leiv kol chocham leiv, nasati chochma, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, of a leiv kol chocham leiv, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave chochma to everybody who had a wise heart. He gave wisdom to everyone with a wise heart. I don't know, that doesn't sound very fair to me. I personally, I think I think HaKadosh Baruch Hu should give wisdom to the people that don't have wisdom. The Pesach saying the opposite. The Pesach saying that the person who has wisdom, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives them wisdom. If he's a Chocham Leiv, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives them wisdom. Ask Rav Chaim the foremost Talmud of the Vilna Gaon. Very simple question. Who's giving wisdom to somebody who is wise of heart? Well, where did they get their first drop of wisdom from in order to be able to receive more wisdom from Hashem if Hashem only gives wisdom to those who are wise? It's a great kasha. Says Rav Chaim Velozhin, it's a posse in. Kuf Yud Aleph. Reish is chochmo yiras Hashem. Says Rav Chaim Velozhina, you want to know where the first drops of Chochmah come from? The first drops of wisdom, where do they come from? They come from Yiras Hashem, from having a fear of Hashem, from having awe of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yipshat. It's got nothing to do with your IQ. And it's got everything to do with your Yiras Hashem. Yeah. The more Yiras Hashem I have, the more room there is for Chochmah. The more Chochmah I have, the greater is my ability to build my Yiras Hashem. The more Yiras Hashem I have, the more Chochmah HaKadosh Baruch will give me. It's a cycle, it's a never-ending cycle. One of the Rishonim, Menachim ben Binyomim Rikanti, Rikanati, I'm sorry, excuse me, He writes about himself that when he was already old, 
He really hadn't achieved very much. He felt that he didn't understand Torah properly. And one day he was so overcome with despair that he went into the base of Nedrash in the middle of the night and he opened up the Oren Kodesh and he started crying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that all he wants to do is to understand his Torah. And he said the next day everything changed. The next day all of a sudden he felt that he was able to understand Torah clearly. And he went on and became the Kanati, wrote Sparim, Chuvas. A voice, I'm telling you. It's every single one of us. Every single one of us has the ability to reach the same levels if we allow ourselves to open our hearts to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It says in the Eri, in his parish on Sefer Mishle, person can learn Torah for 10 years. They acquire 10 years worth of Torah. You might think that each year he earns another 10%. So the first year he learns 10% of that 10 years worth of Torah and the next year another 10% and the year after another 10% until at the end of 10 years he's got 100% worth of 10 years worth of learning. Says in Me'iri, that's not the way it works. Says in Me'iri, the more you toil in Torah, the more you try to understand Torah, the more Torah you'll be able to understand. And the better you'll understand it. The more you go over it, the easier it becomes to understand it. What took months at the beginning to learn, to understand later on in a person's life can take hours, even less sometimes. Why is that? Because as you progress, as you learn, as you understand more, the Torah becomes a part of you. And you become a part of the Torah. One of the greats from our generation of Chaim Kreisberg, who passed away not so very long ago, was the chief rabbi of Antwerp. The Gon Oilom, he knew everything. Towards the end of his life, he was in and out of hospital. Sometimes he would lose consciousness, take a while until he regained it. One of my friends was very close to him. And sometimes when he went into hospital, so he would go and sit by his bed so that he should never be alone. And he said, one of those times, Rav Chaim Kreisberg, at some point, he came to after having been unconscious for a little while. And Rav Chaim Kreisberg was always concerned that he was going to lose his, his memory, forget, forget everything that he knew. So when he was finally revived, he looked at my friend and he says, I have to see if my head is still working. And he started talking about ridiculous things that had happened in Antwerp 25 years earlier. That this person came to see him and he wore a tie that was this color, and this person came and said this, and this person had that, and this person did that. So after five or ten minutes worth of listening to this, my friend says to him, Rebbe, he says, uh, maybe to see if your mind is working, maybe we should learn a little Gemara together. And Rav Chaim Kreisberg looked at him and he says, no, he says, you don't understand. He says, the Gemara is in my blood. 
I can never forget the Gemara. He says, if I want to know if my head is still working, I have to see if I can remember the ridiculous things from 20 years ago. The boy said, you hit sharp. At the beginning, at the beginning of a journey into understanding Torah and learning Torah, the Torah is in the Shemayim. Na'ev al-Yam, it's far away across the ocean. It's truly hard. But a Kodesh Baruch who says, Loi niflis. It's all there. It's just waiting for you. It's true that until you start, it really is Me'ev al-Yam. But once you start, it becomes Beficho, Ubilvovcho, La Soisoi. It becomes an inseparable part of you. When we reach the point where our whole being wants to know HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Torah. When we reach the point where our greatest desire is to know HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Torah. When our greatest aspiration is to understand HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Torah. Then we've reached the point where we understand why we need to go back over what it is that we've learned over and over and over and over again. And then we have to aspire to reach the point where we want to go over what it is that we've learned over and over again. There's a famous story they tell Shimon Schwab, the late Rav of Kaladas Yeshurim in Washington Heights, when he was a 14 year old Bocha learning in the Mir in Eastern Europe, he decided that he was going to make a trip to Radim, to the Chofetz Chaim, to spend Shabbos, one Shabbos with the Chofetz Chaim. It was Pasha's Beshalach. Shalach Shudas. There were a few bochrim sitting around the table together with the Chofetz Chaim. The Chofetz Chaim asked them, Akasha, Pashas B'Shalach, tells over the story of the mon, of the manna that came down in the desert. Asked the Chofetz Chaim a little question to the bochrim. He says to him, tell me, he says, everybody knows that the mon tasted of whatever you wanted it to taste of. You want your mom to taste a chopped liver, it tasted a chopped liver. You want your mom to taste a chocolate cake, it tasted a chocolate cake. All you have to do was think what it is that you want, and then it would be. Ask the Chofetz Chaim, tell me, what did the mom taste like if you didn't think about anything? Her boys started debating backwards and forwards. Tasted like one place, the, Gemara, the, the, the Torah says that it, it, it had like an oil-like dimension to it. It had a honey-like dimension to it. It was like this, it was like that. After everybody had given their little idea of what they thought the mom must have tasted like, if you didn't think about it, the Chofetz Chaim says no. He says the mon is something spiritual, it's something ruchni. Says the Chofetz Chaim, if you don't think about it, it doesn't taste of anything. And then he banged on the Gemara that was in front of him and he said, there's nothing more geschmack than a daf Gemara. There's nothing tastier. There's nothing more delicious than a daf Gemara. But if you don't think about it, there's nothing drier than a daf Gemara either. Rav Chaim Kreisvold used to say that if a person wants to be a masmina, you want to be a, a great scholar, you should sit and study Torah because it's a school of Hasmoda. You see, it's going around in a circle. It sounds witty, it sounds like it's fun, right? But there's actually the most incredibly wise counsel. What is a person supposed to do when they're not feeling inspired to learn Torah? Learn Torah. Learn Torah just for a few minutes. Something will pique your interest on the way. 
something that will make you want to look a little bit further to see if you can find the answer to what it is that you've just looked at. Something will be there that will reveal the beauty of learning Torah. So he'll study some more and some more until he becomes a masmid. A person wants to be a masmid, he needs to learn. Because one moment of Torah leads to the next moment of Torah. One hour of learning Torah leads to the next hour of learning Torah and to many, many more hours of learning. We've reached the very last moments for reciting the David Hashem. For 50 glorious days, we've been reciting the David Hashem twice a day. One of the most prominent psukim is Pesach Dalad. Achas sha'alti me'eis Hashem oisa v'akeish shifti beveis Hashem kol yimei chayai. One thing I ask of Hashem, that I seek, that I may dwell in the house of Hashem all the days of my life. For those of you familiar with a little bit of Hebrew grammar, the Pesach opens in the past tense. Achas sha'alti me'eis Hashem. There's one thing that I ask from Hashem. And then it switches to the present tense. Oisa v'akeish. Shifti beveis Hashem ko yimei chayai. Why would that be? When I was in school, changing tenses in the middle of a sentence was a capital offense. What's going on? Says the Malbim. The most beautiful, beautiful Kiddush over here. We're telling ourselves to check and to see if our desires and aspirations from the past are aligned with what we want now in the present. I'm sure we all started off the new year, Tashin Pei Hei, with enormous expectations, with inspirational ambitions. And now, moments away from the end of this amazing uplifting period that began with Rosh Chodesh Elul and that is concluding with Shmini Atzeres and Simchas Torah, now is the time to take stock and to see if our current ambitions measure up to what we originally wanted from ourselves. Shifti Beveis Hashem. Because now is the moment just before Shmini Atzeres, just before Simchas Torah, that we have to make sure that we're ready. Ready for what? Ready to finish and to begin the Torah. To finish and to begin the same Torah that we finished and began last year. And the Ez Hashem, the same Torah that we will finish and begin next year as well. We should all merit, not just to finish the Torah and start it again, but that we should want to finish the Torah and start it again, and again, and again, and again. That we should be full of fiery enthusiasm, fiery enthusiasm to reach new levels of understanding Hashem's beautiful and holy Torah. That each and every day in Tashim Pehe, rises us to new levels of Chuka Satora, the desire to learn Torah, and of Ava Satora, and of love of Torah. Amen for Amen.